Tennessee's permaculture moving picture show. Spring goes spring and now it's time that all the fields would grow. All the things that Grandma and Grandpa used to know. It's Tennessee's permaculture moving picture show. Tennessee's moving picture show. Tennessee's moving picture show. Tennessee's permaculture moving picture show. Spring on spring and now it's time that all the fields will grow. Welcome back to the Tennessee Permaculture Moving Picture Show. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, beginnings of the cow operation. I got two Jersey heifers and one beef cow, and uh, we're going to go look at where the milking is going to happen, where the feeding happens, and we're going to take a look at the pasture that's being developed to minimize the input costs, which are pretty substantial at the moment. So let's go have a look. Hey, it's Mike from Tennessee Permaculture. I'm uh, it's feed day, so our it's feed collection. It's go get the feed day. So I'm riding up to uh, Mennonite country, and we're gonna get some feed for the week. I'm still waiting on peas to come in, so I'm still buying the sweet feed right now. But you know, we're um, I'm getting my blends right. I think I had the alfalfa pellets <laughs> too too densely uh, mixed in, so I'm gonna back that off. And right now they have, I'm buying the wheat, but not for feed. They have as far as whole grains, because that's all I'm trying to buy. I'm trying to move to a whole grains that I can reasonably import um, regularly because I have a grain mill, a small one, but, it, you know, it's, I think it does like five pounds a minute or something like that. So um, right now I buy whole corn, whole oats. And I have the wheat, and then I buy alfalfa. Now, when the alfalfa, when they start getting hay again, I can buy. Um, I'm going to figure out if I can run the hay through there to chop it up, or if I, if I, whatever I can get, I'll just get regular alfalfa. But for now, I'm doing the pellets, so that's the most expensive thing. But uh, I'm going to go stack up some feed on this truck, and uh, we'll. Uh, I'll get back with you after that. Here's one of the joys. Coming up to Mennonite country for my feet. Get to about halfway step back in time. Obviously, power line. I guess in Ohio, everybody doesn't like this because it's all the time and everybody's in a big hurry. No, I'm kind of in a hurry, but I'm not in a big hurry. Anyway, you can see the, the horses are not turning right now, but there's, there's the horses. That's where they mill the feed. The horse driven mill, anyway. Maybe they'll be turning on the way out. There's Miss uh, Molly. She's a Jersey Guernsey cross. She's very pregnant. I had to hike up here to find her. I think it's one of the best looking cows I've had. The only reason I got her, I think it's because that horn is crooked. And I don't care about that. That one's pointing down. And then, sorry, I'm out of breath. It's a hike up that hill. There's Miss Beef Cow. 
these tailings. He's young. And there's Miss Lollipop. She's full Jersey. She's pregnant too, but not as pregnant. So they're up here just chilling out in the woods. Up here by the chicken coop that we were at the other day. So anyway, those are the three I got to feed. She'll be dropping their baby hopefully next month. And she may be a couple months out yet. And the beef cow's got another couple of seasons with us. So anyway, there's the engine. Here's our homemade, <laughs> uh, I guess, barn. <laughs> uh, and then keep some, I think we're going to, that freezer doesn't work. We're going to try to keep some feed in here close. But, and this isn't finished yet, but this is the important part. Here's our stalls where we're actually going to be milking too. At Once we get to the, that part of the process, we gotta, we're going to separate this into three stalls. Uh, right now, as you can see the feed pans, I'm just putting feed in here in the morning for the cows to kind of wander in here and get used to it so that when we put the dividers in, it's a little more standard operation for them. I can show you. Right over here, see all that hay. We didn't have a shelter to put them in this winter while we were building that. So we would feed the hay and sometimes feed right here. <clears throat> and we just continuously covered up the uh, manure. And um, when it got thin, we'd put more hay on it. It's supposed to be kind of in the vein of the Joel Salatin uh, hay shed, winter hay shed, We're trying to capture as much of the nutrient as we could. So it's, I don't know that we did a very good job of that, but, what, you know, we did what we could. So uh, this is, there's been a lot of manure pats that disappeared into this. Uh, the chickens had access to it, obviously, but they didn't. I never saw them get overexcited about this little spot but they were certainly welcome to it to clean up the hay the uh a uh, little bit of grain or uh to clean up the manure pats so uh hopefully we can get this under roof by this uh this the winter 2023-2024 just to uh maintain all that nutrient through the season Here's where the permaculture is going to come in. That, you can see how much higher that earth, the, where the grass is starting to come up, is higher than this road. What that actually is, is erosion from way up the hill. That's the earth running away as fast as it can and continuing off to go that way. So we've got the plans. We've got so much water that we've got to be careful because just digging swales and, you know, other things like that could just potentially turn this whole place into a swamp. There's so much water here that we've really got to be careful about that. But directing the water, managing to slow the water down and allowing it to still move is the goal. If you watch the chicken video, way up there, that's the high point of the property. You can see the, that was the chicken coop where the uh, stationary composting retired chickens are going to go. And now we're going to head out back to the past, what could be pasture. As we came, we came from back this way, we come through the woods, it opens up out into this field. What you can see there is me gathering up all the the trash and stuff that's just accumulated over the last several years. I had to clean all that up. I got out here with the bush hog and just knocked this all back, trying to open it up, let the sun get in here and grow some grass. It's a, actually 
not too awful. It's compared to what it was. You can see that the, the vegetation is very thin. But this is potentially, these poles were the greenhouse poles. There's a row right there and a row right here. I got to get out and pull those up. And then over there are all the greenhouse poles. I had to move those. They had been set out here and all the blackberry had grown up around them. This is what's left of the blackberry because it's close to the pole. But the, uh, uh, it was like, it was like pulling a comb through tangled hair. Cause all that blackberry came was, was, uh, just tangled up. So it took me a long time to pull all those poles out and, uh, just get them out of the way and stage them over there for the coming year. And we're going to get the rest of the trash out. That over there, you can see is some fencing, but a lot of it is windows. I found a great deal on windows several years back from a factory I was working for. Basically, I had to haul, just haul them off. I've got those in them, a lot of bigger ones. So, you know, that's the plans for the glass house one day. So... This is field number one. It's uh, not very good at estimating the size, but I'm guessing it's probably about a half acre. Yeah. If we get all that over there cleaned up, the clover's starting to come through. I'm thinking it's not going to be too hard. I just got to keep the cows and horses off of it long enough for it to recover so what we did was uh, i've got them locked up in the front half of the property and i'm having to feed a lot of hay just to uh give this field the rest i got out here bush hogged it obviously but i you know that's that was just knocking down all the weeds that had overtaken all the sage grass and stuff that animals won't eat so Knock that down and then lock them out of here. Um, and I'm just keeping an eye on it. It's an expensive way to go, but if I can't get these turned into good pasture, then the feed bill will never relent and only grow bigger. So come down in this little valley. The creek runs through the property right here. It's wet weather creek. Although it's there's so much water here, it's usually not completely dry. You hear the dog over there playing. It just runs over. It goes down that way into the back pond. And then through the spillway, the dam blew out, but there is a spillway there. When we get the dam repaired, <clears throat> we'll have, you know, basically it leaves, it goes into zone five after that. So. Anything we can do to keep it on site longer, slow it down. So as we come up, this would be the beginning of the second back, you know, the backfield. And it's not much better. Here's the problem. It's so wet that there's more moss than grass out here. It's just covered in moss. It's so wet. So I'm hoping that by keeping it managed a lot better. Now that I'm here, of course, being a truck driver, I had to count on the help. And, you know, the if you want something done right, do it yourself. This didn't really work out for me for a long time. So there's lots, it was all sage grass, which is this stuff standing up right here. It's all dead. Oh, that's that yellow grass. That's, I missed, you know, obviously I got here with the bush dog, but that stuff right there. So I had to knock all that down. You can see it over there in the distance too. I had to knock all that down and give grass a chance. Look at this. We do have some grass coming up. Probably Johnson grass. So, 
uh, we're, we're gonna take most of these trees out to open the pasture up. It goes through there. <clears throat> I think you can see. Yeah. All the way back over that area. You can just see the pond, maybe. There's the back pond. So you can see, if we go to the back pond, clear all this out, that's gonna be a nice amount of feed, a nice uh, re uh, relief on the feed budget. That gate right there represents the entrance to zone five. Not really planning on anything back there, just to go and observe. And then we can go up this way. It's all pretty much the same. It's actually greening up pretty nice right now. For probably the first time in almost a decade, I guess. We got our work cut out for us. I'm gonna clear out all that. Push that back, see that? The tree line right there, I'm gonna follow that tree line all the way around. So all this poking out has to go, just cause I need the pasture. And we've got probably 40 acres of deep woods on this side, so. <clears throat> and see the moss, it's just everywhere. Of course the road's gonna look worse than everything else. We open this up, all the trees out here in the open. Oh, well, not all of them. We'll do some silvo pasture. All the cedars gotta go though. Most of them are trash because they're not one big cedar tree, but uh, several of them wrapped in each other. And so that goes all the way back to that tree line, right back there. And clear all this out up to that tree line. And then you can see how far this goes. <clears throat> so see, all this has to go. Got to open up some pasture. It's half semi-open in spots and half thick. And we've done some work. We've been working on it slowly over time. As you can see there's a little road here. It follows the, the woods we're gonna keep going. Let's see, well, there's, yeah, there's a road that cuts across. Basically, we're gonna take that tree line. There's a road that was kind of cut out through there. We're gonna take everything to my left. Oh, that's going to be pasture and all this will be woods now this is the same woods this is uh, as best i can estimate it's about 15 acres that that's where the the pigs are in now so we can move them through those 15 acres and then regenerate the uh woods goodness gracious look at that tree that's another story for another day one of our helpers was helping himself a lot turns out while I was gone, so, but this will be pasture. And uh, we were trying to hold off to get the sawmill built. I'm not sure that's gonna happen. We do have the wood shop up and running, but we're just, now what we may do is uh, just open up what we can this season and slowly, yeah. Okay, I went too far, <laughs> all right, yeah, so. Never mind about that. This road I'm on now is the tree line where we're keeping it. So you can see that road goes all the way back right there. So everything to my left here, all this.
will be the woods or will be the pasture. And see, it kind of goes off right around that way. So all this has to go, which means plenty of work. But that'll open up a lot more pasture for us. And see, more moss. It's everywhere out here. So the thing about permaculture is capturing all the water and uh, putting it to use. The problem is we have so much water, we'd be underwater if we capture it all. So hopefully we can direct it and slow it down. Miko's got him a big bone. Miko, where are you going? So anyway, that's uh, hopefully gonna help uh, minimize the feed bill. So I'm gonna use the, uh, I think my plan was, rather than have to deal with raw dairy and the customer and public, my main goal is really to feed most of that, use what we want as a family and friends. But a lot of that milk is actually gonna go to the pigs minimize the pig's feed bill because that's what's really <laughs> eating my lunch. So we're gonna use uh, raw milk and the abundant chicken eggs that don't go for other things to help minimize the feed bill for them. So if I have to put money into feed, hopefully I can put most of that money into the cows a little bit into the chickens if I have to. Although I'm not, I don't even feed the chickens we have yet, but we don't have that many. They're making a good living all by themselves. So if we can put most of the money into the cows and then the cows, manure pats will feed pigs and chickens quite nicely. And y'all eat all your hay already again? There's the rabbits. And that's gonna be the worm bin. All right. So that's the cows anyway. So thanks for stopping by. Come back and see us. Spring and now it's time that all the fields will grow.